Adopting a strategic mindset is foundational for defining problems and formulating questions effectively and for ultimately realizing meaningful change within an organization. So in this lecture, we'll focus first on what is strategy and what is strategy formulation and implementation. And then ultimately we'll move on to, well, how do you go about adopting a strategic mindset? So let's start with strategy. So you can think of strategy as a well-devised and thoughtful plan for achieving an objective. It's going to be future-oriented, it's going to provide a roadmap towards completion of an objective, and it's going to require coordination of business activities to achieve short-term and long-term planned objectives. Now, there's generally two phases for any strategy, and that is strategy formulation and strategy implementation. And let's start with strategy formulation. So strategy formulation is the process of planning what to do to achieve organizational objectives, or in other words, the development and or refinement of a strategy. So you can think of strategy formulation as having these five steps. First, you need to have and create a mission, vision, and values. Then you need to analyze the internal and external environments. You need to pick a strategy type define strategic objectives to satisfy stakeholders, and then ultimately finalize that strategy into a strategic plan. Let's start with this first one and dig a little bit deeper into it. So when we talk about creating a mission, vision, and values, we're really talking about the mission, vision, and values serving as a compass for the organization. And they help to guide the organizational action towards a desired future state, and they also provide parameters and guidelines in the form of values. Now, moving on to analyzing internal and external environments, this is often where you hear the SWOT analysis come into play, which refers to the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats, or SWOT analysis, and it provides a framework for analyzing these internal and external environments, where strengths and weaknesses are internal to the organization, and opportunities and threats are external. Moving on, when it comes to picking a strategy type, Strategy type really refers to the general approach an organization takes to bring the mission, vision, and values to life, such as an organization picking a strategy type like differentiation or cost leadership. And so with differentiation, for example, an organization might decide to figure out how to make its products different or its services different from its competitors. And this can ultimately help create and sustain a competitive advantage for that organization. Now, defining specific objectives to sat satisfy stakeholders and specifically key stakeholders involves the following. It's really the stakeholders and the needs of those key stakeholders that we need to consider. And we need to do this in order to make sure that we have and can achieve a sustainable competitive advantage. And so who are key stakeholders? Well, this is often going to be customers, investors, and shareholders, as well as our own employees and the broader communities within which an organization operates, which could be local, regional, national, or even global. Now, ultimately, we get to the fifth step of strategy formulation, which is finalizing our strategy. And this really means summarizing everything that I've talked about so far into a clear strategic plan that can be communicated throughout the organization. So after we have that strategic plan in place that we derived and built based on our strategy formulation phase, now we're ready for strategy implementation, where strategy implementation refers to the process of following through on the strategic plan that was developed and or refined during the strategy formulation phase. And so we talk about strategy implementation, we're talking about building and leveraging the capabilities of human capital to enact and realize that strategic plan and its strategic objectives. And so this is where human resource management comes into play. Human resource management houses the systems, policies, and practices that can help us manage and leverage those capabilities of our human capital, our people in our organizations, and really want to make sure that we align our human resource management policies and practices and systems with the strategic plan so we can be of assistance to the organization in trying to realize those objectives. So 
This also leads us to what we call strategic human resource management. Now, strategic human resource management refers to the process of aligning your human resource policies and practices, as well as your general systems, with the strategic objectives of the organization, including achieving employee, operational, stakeholder, and financial outcomes. And in order to do all of this, to achieve and sustain a competitive advantage. And so you can think about strategic human resource management as being the confluence of human resource management and strategy, which ultimately leads us to this strategic human resource management perspective. Now, Pfeffer has seven practices of successful organizations that nicely encapsulate how human resource management and HR in general can be a strategic partner and add strategic value. And so these seven practices of successful organizations are as follows. First, to create employment security policies that encourage employee involvement and commitment. Second, to selectively hire new employees to create a highly qualified workforce um, that, in which the people are a good fit for that organization. Third, to organize employees into self-management teams to achieve higher performing teams. Fourth, to com compensate employees based on their performance in order to attract, motivate, and to retain those talented employees that you wish to retain. Fifth, train employees to enhance the knowledge and skills necessary for high performance. Sixth, reduce status differences between employees to leverage ideas, skills, and effort at all levels. And then finally, seventh, share information on strategy and performance to motivate employees to contribute to the organization. And this last bit is really important. And this is really, when it comes to adopting a strategic mindset, not only should the organization be sharing information about strategy and performance, you should also be looking to adopt a mindset in which you're open to receiving that information as well and actively and proactively seeking out information about how you can contribute to the organization and the realization of its strategy, strategic plan, and strategic objectives. So now let's talk about that strategic mindset. So when we talk about adopting a strategic mindset, we can think of a strategic mindset as including familiarity with strategic goals and roles, understanding of the organizational systems, the focus on opportunities for innovation, and the application of curiosity, and maybe more specifically, intellectual curiosity. So let's dive into each one of these in a little bit more detail, and I'll provide some tips for how you can make these come to fruition and bring these into the real world. So when we talk about a strategic mindset, including familiarity with the strategic goals and roles, this really goes back to what I was saying a moment ago. And it's important and incumbent on, upon a person to not only receive the message, but also to be receptive to the messaging around the strategy and the strategic plan of an organization. So one should become familiar with the strategic objectives and those key decision makers in the organization that help us achieve those strategic objectives as well. Now, in terms of understanding of organizational systems, we really want to take a systems thinking perspective here. And we want to use systems thinking when defining problems and formulating questions. Where systems thinking and systems theory and systems theory perspective, those all generally refer to the idea that the world and organization specifically are made up of systems and subsystems and so forth. And there's linkages between many of them or all of them. And there's often ripple effects and so forth. What you do in one subsystem might have effects down the line in other subsystems. And we can also think about people living not only within the organizational and working within an organizational system, but they also have their family system, their friend system, and so forth. And all of these can be intertwined and they all affect each other. So it's important to take that perspective when trying to understand how changes to one system might have impacts on, change on other systems within that organization. Now, next, we can focus on opportunities for innovation. And so to do that, we need to think openly and broadly before we start narrowing our focus too much. And so this is when you might engage in activities like wildstorming, where you try to come up with as many ideas as possible, even if you think those ideas are potentially outlandish. And then you can really have this broad mindset before you start picking and choosing those different approaches or problems or questions that you think need to be solved or need answers to, and you start narrowing things down. Now, finally, when it comes to application of curiosity, and again, this can also more specifically apply to intellectual curiosity, this is where we need to start asking why and why not questions. 
So when presented with information, instead of taking it and just accepting it as it is, sometimes we need to take a step back and say, well, why is that happening? And should we accept that happening in that way? Or why is this not happening is another question you might ask. And so this requires curiosity. You need to think critically. And the aforementioned steps of being familiar with the strategic goals and roles, understanding organizational systems, and focusing on opportunities for innovation should hopefully lead you to this opportunity to apply this curiosity. Now, in terms of the role of a strategic mindset, it has a bunch of applications and is important for a number of things. But specifically, I like to focus on the strategic mindset as being very important when we think about problem definition and question formulation. It's important to adopt and apply a strategic mindset before we start getting into different problems we could identify and define, as, and then ultimately formulating questions related to those problems. Because we want to make sure that we're identifying and defining problems that are strategically relevant for our organization. And we want to make sure, too, that the questions we're asking, when we get the answers to those questions, it'll all tie back to our strategic plan and the initiatives of the organization and ultimately align with the mission, the values, and the vision of that organization. So in this lecture, we focused on strategy and strategy formulation and strategy implementation as two phases of strategy. And in particular, um, we talked about in strategy formulation, the different steps involved in coming to a strategic plan. And then in strategy implementation, how can HR and human resource management partner with the organization and be a true strategic partner. And one of the ways we can do this is by adopting an approach called strategic human resource management, which is really that confluence between traditional human resource management and strategy. And that leads us to strategic human resource management. Now, we just left off by talking about what is a strategic mindset and really why should we adopt one in the first place? It's all about thinking about the strategy and using that strategy to inform and inspire our actions and decisions um, that we're going to make, and especially when it comes to defining problems and asking questions or formulating questions. So this wraps up the lecture on adopting a strategic mindset.